Episode 266 of the Read to Lead podcast is brought to you in part by Self Publishing School, helping you go from blank page to published author in as little as 90 days. Get a free copy of the book published when you sign up for Chandler Bolt's free training. Go to readtoleadpodcast.com slash published right now. Well, the secret shame of most road warriors is we don't know how to rest and we don't do it. We minimize it. We justify not doing it. We view it as completely optional. Hi, and welcome to the Read to Lead podcast. It's the podcast dedicated to your personal and professional growth. My name is Jeff, and I believe that if you want to achieve what I call true success in your business and in your life, then you need to be a lifelong learner. In other words, uh, in- intentional and consistent reading is a must. It's not optional. The Read to Lead podcast is designed to help you narrow this reading list and bring you key insights and valuable ideas from some of today's most successful and inspiring authors. Our guest today has become a friend of mine over the last uh, two or three years. Uh, His name is Brian Buckley, and his new book is called Elite Road Warrior, Six Energy Habits to Master the Business Travel Life. I'll ask Brian to share about the physical energy habits of a successful and healthy road warrior, uh, some incredibly creative ways to connect with your family when you're on the road, how to create the right mental energy habits, and plenty more. Today, if you're listening to this on May 7th, 2019, is the last day for the Boss Free Virtual Summit, my online conference, helping you to start your own business and be your own boss, or at least explore whether or not that's an opportunity suitable for you. Uh, It's been free to attend. In fact, if you haven't yet registered but do so today, you can still catch Sunday, Monday, and today's speaker sessions. If, however, you've missed attending the summit as it happens, all is not lost. To find out how you can access all 34 speaker sessions on demand, get access to $1,500 in speaker bonuses, and an invitation to our private Boss Free community, visit BossFreeSummit.com. Brian Paul Buckley is a business traveler, performance expert, and a domestic and international experienced road warrior. I love it. He's traveled as a bottom of the barrel manager to the height of a vice president and knows the challenges of both worlds. As a husband of one and father of five, he understands the importance of family and the challenges of staying connected while on the road. He pushed so hard on the road at one point, he was sidelined with major health issues that could have been avoided, he says. He also found himself about 40 pounds overweight and struggled with his energy until one day he'd had enough and made major life changes that produced tremendous results in every area of his road life. We're going to talk about that. Uh, He is an author, speaker, and corporate trainer who wants to take exhausted and existing road warriors to become elite road warriors who master the business travel life. His new book to help do just that is called Elite Road Warrior, Six Energy Habits to Master the Business Travel Life life. He's become a good friend the last almost three years. Brian, welcome to the Read to Lead podcast. I'm excited to have you here. Well, honored to be here, Jeff. Long time listener, first time interviewee. So man, I'm pumped. <laughs> well, when I first heard uh, you were writing this book and, and became familiar with you, I thought to myself, this is you know, Elite Road Warrior. This is a very niche topic, it seemed like to me, but it's it's not really all that niche, is it? No, you know, Jeff, there's, I mean, the amazing reality is there's over 1.3 business trips every single day, 488 million business travelers every year, and a staggering $320 billion is spent on business travel every year. Mm. And I don't know if you know this, Jeff, but the average road warrior spends between 48 and 74 nights away from home every year. I can do that by Memorial Day some years. <laughs> well, I want to sort of dig into these six energy habits the book is sort of based on. But I thought before we dug into to each one of them specifically, maybe you could give us sort of a broad overview of the framework of the six energy habits. What are we, what are we looking at there? Well, the reality is that, I mean, the road is hard. It's difficult to be productive. It's challenge. To eat healthy and to stay in shape. And it's a battle to stay connected with those you love back home. And every person in general is a creature of habit. Mm. But business travelers take habits, well, to a whole new level. I mean, it's their road life. It's their road rhythm. 
So the premise is taking many of these habits that we do every single day on the road and find ways to create energy so that we can master this business travel life. So the energy habits focuses in three specific focus areas. One is work, which is obviously why we're on the road. Our health, but also our home life. Mm. And sadly, most road warriors, they only focus on work and they end up overworked, underproductive, stressed out, and burned out. And most of the time, it's at the cost of their own health since mo- most road warriors are in the worst shape of their entire life and their home life being disconnected with those they love back home is often, well, sometimes just a mess. Mm-hmm. So the six energy habits is a framework for business travelers to stop getting by, as I would call it, to getting better from the existing road warrior or the exhausted road warrior to working themselves up to becoming an elite road warrior. And lastly, these six energy habits are broken down into three physical energy habits and then three mental energy habits. Yeah, I like I like how you've structured this, and it's it's somewhat hard to describe in in one sense without the, the uh, visual aids. But uh, as you said a moment ago, there there's the health area, the work area, the home area. The health area includes three of those habits. Uh, the work area includes two, and the home area includes one. Did I get that right? You're exactly right. All right, You're exactly right. <laughs> I did my homework. Awesome. Okay, well, let's dive deeper into the three physical energy habits, uh, starting with move. As I read the book, I realized that there are uh, plenty of ways I can move more when traveling, whether that's at an airport, at my hotel, or even on a plane, heaven forbid. Uh, Share some of your tips for getting in more standing time, more walking time. Well, during the average business trip, the road does most of the moving for us, Jeff. I mean, you know, we're driving to the airport, we're sitting at the gate, we're sitting on the flight, we're sitting in a rental car, or ride share, we're sitting in a conference room all day long or a restaurant or a hotel bar to plop ourselves down at a desk in our hotel room and eventually work our way to the bed. Mm. So the goal is to implement a formula that I call increase M4X. So think of an up arrow for increase, M for movement, and 4X is in four ways. So how do I stand more? which is think up on my feet, not down on my butt. How do I walk more? Think forward, not still. Run more, think cardio, just get my heart rate up. And lift more, think strength training through body weight or resistance bands or dumbbells. Mm. So the tips begin thinking of how I can add more movement in my day, thinking about increase M4X. So as you kind of alluded to, I mean, I can stand when I get to the gate or even 30 minutes on the flight, every 30 minutes on the flight. Um, I can stand a few minutes during a meeting and kind of be that guy, you know, who stands. <laughs> Makes everybody else awkward. I love it. But eventually, nobody cares. All you right. know, I can walk during a break. We get a break, and most people, what they do is they, they go from social me- or talking to social media or one computer screen to another. I want to get up, and I want to walk during a break. Mm. Um, I can do a walking meeting. Um, I can walk early in the morning and listen to something, I don't know, like the Read the Lead podcast <laughs> or the Elite Road Warrior podcast. Mm. Uh, I can take the stairs by staying on a higher floor at a hotel. Um, I can do leg squats in a suit. I mean, there's so many different ways, Jeff, within our day on a business travel day that we can get more movement. And I always I remember the phrase, do something, anything, just not nothing. Do something, anything is better than nothing. And I always try to remember, too, that someone busier than me is working out right now. So if mm-hmm. I can put into my mind, you know, there's, I can do one, uh, any of these, of stand more, walk more, run more, lift more, any given part of my day, if I'm willing to be creative and I don't care what people think, I'm not responsible for them, I'm responsible for me. And if I want to have more movement in my day and movement creates energy, I need to do the things that I'm willing to do that are going to give me the energy I need to get the results that I want. I, I love the, the simple concepts from the book, but things we don't typically think about. Like when I go to a hotel, I stay in a hotel room, my, my default thinking is, well, gee, I hope they put me on the first floor. <laughs> that's that's exactly. my, my default thinking. Or if I am on a higher floor, it, it, it rarely occurs to me, though there have been some exceptions, it rarely occurs to me to use the stairs every single time. I might do that out of guilt. If I'm going to the gym that morning to work out and I sure. think, well, I should take the stairs because I'm getting ready to work out, but I rarely do that any other time. I may be dressed up. Oh, I don't want to sweat or this or that. But but I love uh, some of the suggestions you make in, in this regard. I, I want to move to the food side of things. And I know uh, the way my mind sometimes works is you know, I don't travel I'm not, I'm not a warrior in the sense that I travel as much as the, the typical uh, person on the road, maybe once every couple of months or three months or something like that. But I often have found myself guilty of viewing that time on the road as like food vacation, <laughs> you know, oh, exactly. where I can just binge or whatever because I've been so good at home and now I can sort of uh, let loose a little bit. Uh, share some of your views on on food and how the, the typical road warrior needs to approach how they think about it. 
Well, one of the biggest comments that I hear from road warriors on a consistent basis, it doesn't matter if I'm at a hotel gate, I'm at a restaurant, wherever, I'm sorry, hotel, airport gate, is how hard it is to eat healthy on the road. Mm. And most road warriors eat and drink too much and move too little. You know, you've heard the phrase, the freshman 15. <laughs> well, then there's the travel 20. And uh, since I'm an overachiever, Jeff, I like to double things. And so I ended up 40 pounds overweight on the road. So. <laughs> I get it. And when I started out, I, you know, I had the daily food budget of a small child who hated food. Mm. And then, you know, to the point as a VP, being able to order a hundred dollar bottle of wine at lunch if I wanted. Mm. So when you're eating the best of the King's food and drinking the best of the King's wine, it's very, very easy to have that mindset. You're on vacation, not a vocation. And when I had to have that mindset shift of how I'm going to view food, everything changed. So it's not just something to consume, uh, succumb to whatever is set in front of us. I have no self-control or I can begin to view food as fuel and fuel as energy. And when we have that mindset shift, it changes us from just the average road war to all of a sudden looking at our energy and how we can perform at an elite level on the road. Mm. Well, what does it mean to be clean and green. When I hear that phrase, I have thoughts of kale and <laughs> and, and things I don't like. W what do you mean when you say think clean and green when it comes to food? Well, when we begin to view food as fuel and fuel as energy, we need to put the right foods into our bodies. So let me give you a, a metaphor. I view the average person, especially a high performer, as a high performance car. It looks amazing on the outside, possibly even in the interior. I mean, we take great care of the outside of the car. Mm. But when we open up the hood, where our energy engine is, this is where things go, well, to use the phrase, off-road. Our energy engine is an absolute mess, Jeff. And when we're doing little to no maintenance on this high-performance car, if we need a repair, we just want it quick and cheap. Just get me back on the road, man. <laughs> and on a consistent basis, we put in cheap fuel, which is our food and our drink. Mm. So thinking clean and green is seeking to do what I call MTHC, an acronym for Make the Healthiest Choice. So it's learning how to ask how can I put better quality food into my high performance car so I can perform at the highest level? And this is done by eating cleaner foods. So think of a, of a whole food as this definition. Anything that eats a plant grows on a plant, but not manufactured in a plant. So the fewer the ingredients, <laughs> the better. Anything that eats a plant grows on a plant, but not manufactured in a plant. So it's, it's less processed, less ingredients, the better. So each of our meal on the road our goal should be just eating a little bit cleaner and a little bit greener. So now I realize that this is a big ask for someone who qualifies their food like I used to. Mm. I just want it quick. I want it easy. I want it tasty. And I want it large. <laughs> but how I felt after this meal after meal on the road, well, weighed me down literally. Mm. So I had to learn how, what can I put in my body that's going to allow this high performance vehicle to perform at an optimal level. So oftentimes it meant eating things, oh, maybe I didn't necessarily care for, I learned to eat them, but I needed to add first good things and then I started to reverse them. So I may have to have the kale and put some sauce on it or have some of these other things on there. I'm starting to get the nutrients in there, in there first. So I'm adding first and mm. then I'm reversing, taking the bad things out or removing those things. But the overall goal is when we look at ourselves, if we're saying we wanna be elite on the road. Now think about it, elite, what's that word even mean? I mean, you hear about an elite athlete. This isn't somebody who's had one great year. It's somebody who's done it for a long stretch of time. Mm. An elite, elite musician, uh, somebody who's been a CEO for a long period of time, or somebody who's just the top in their organization. Elite is somebody who's doing things differently than the average person. That's the amateur. The pro is saying, you know what? I'm not going to look at everybody else. I'm going to do things the way they're going to make me to be the best that I can be that I want to be on the road. And oftentimes, it making sure that we're taking care of this high-performance car ourselves on the road. Well, uh, help translate that, if you would. Uh, give us some, some practical tips that we can use to ensure that we eat clean and green when on the road. How, how can we make it, uh, well, for me, easier? <laughs> well, I'm a simple guy, and uh, especially on the road, I got to be able to remember it. So for yeah. me, I put it down into three specific things. So it's continually hydrate, it is clean and green, and carry control substance. So the three C's. I mean, first thing, I got to put the right water into my body, the right liquids into my body. Most people, they have two liquids that they put in if they're on the road. It's usually coffee and, and, and um, caffeine or, mm -hmm. I say, almost three, alcohol. And that's the, the, the amount of liquids that they put in. But it's like putting in bad oil into your car. If it's a high-performance car, it's going to require a certain type of oil. So it's putting in the hydration into our body. Most of us are dehydrated in general. 
you get in a plane, which is a dehydration tube. <laughs> it's amazing how much water comes out of your body, how much we drink on the road, which is obviously an understandable thing, oftentimes in many social set- settings. But we don't do the one-to-one free mass program, which is one alcoholic drink to one glass of water. And saying, I'm not going to drink that second drink until I have a full glass of water. Mm. It's having water the first thing in our morning. So that we're putting the water, that that hydration, that oil into our high-performance vehicle. Uh, it's thinking MTHC at every meal, making the healthiest choice. It may start out, Jeff, by just saying, okay, make a healthier choice. So obviously, we go out to eat almost all the time on the road. So it's looking at that menu and figuring out, okay, what is is the healthiest choice or a healthier choice. I've got options that are here. It's also thinking, how am I going to feel an hour from now? You know, Am I going to feel junked down? Am I, or is this going to give me the energy that I need? So it's learning to ask those questions on a consistent basis. For me, sometimes it, it's, I'll offer to pick the, the restaurant. So somebody will say, hey, you know, I just want this, this, and that. So I'll offer to do the intel on that. So I'll check the menus or get, make a phone call or get online and look at the menus. And so the, whatever the two or three choices that I make, I already know in advance what I'm going to order. I'm not leaving it to the smell or the person walking by. Mm. I'm making those calculated choices ahead of time. Then I'm going to the server and I'm pulling them aside and saying, hey, Jennifer, is there any chance that you could work with me here a little bit? I'm working on kind of a restricted diet. Would you be willing to help me? Mm. Never once have they gone, no way, buddy. <laughs> they're oftentimes, well, what are you looking for? And I'll kind of give an example. I'm just asking for a tweak on this. Sometimes a chef will come out. They're more than willing to compensate and help me that way. And I'm going to compensate them on the back end, you know, with a gracious and generous tip on there. But I'm just learning to go, you know, I want to take care of myself. I don't care what everybody else orders this day. This is my responsibility. And I want to be elite in the areas that matter most. The third area of that is carry control of substance. I'm a snack carrier. So that means I'm never going to be caught off guard. So I've got something that's green. I've got some healthy nuts and snacks that I'll either buy or I'll bring on the road. I've got a small little snack bag that I carry along Mm. and I make sure that I'm always in control. Things go wrong on the road. Flights get delayed. You're stuck in traffic. You end up in a spot where there's not really good options to eat. And I don't want to just go, oh, well, I'll just start over tomorrow because then I end up just taking a pass on the day and I blow it that day, I don't want to do that. I want to avoid the second mistake as James Clear would say. I want to dip, not dive. I want to make sure I just stop the bleeding immediately. And those are some of the things by continually hydrating, eating clean and green by thinking make the healthiest choice or the healthier choice when I'm looking at the menu and carrying control of substance that matters. And one more point of this too, Jeff, I may offend somebody here. <laughs> it's really not that hard to eat healthy on the road. You know what I'm saying? If a menu's in front of you, you have a choice. My wife's not ordering for me. My wife's not putting the food in front of me with my five kids at my house. I have a choice of what I'm going to order. It's a matter of willpower, self-discipline, choices, and being willing to say, you know what? This is what the average, the exhausted, the existing road warrior would do, or what would the elite road warrior do? Mm. And making some of those decisions can make a huge difference when you're staring at a menu. Or for me, sometimes I'll choose a hotel that has a, a, a full kitchen. And so I'll go out and buy my food so I have complete control of that. Uh, it's less expensive for me or if, if I'm doing a contract job or for a company that I'm working with. And it also makes sure that I'm able to put exactly the best possible foods in me. So that's what I would say under the tips. Mm, those are fantastic uh, tips. And as someone who has dined with uh, Brian before, I can attest to the fact uh, that he pulls the server side and asks for that help uh, with the restricted diet. And I can also attest to the fact that he rewards them handsomely on, on the back end. Uh, you'd, you'd be so proud of me, uh, Brian. I now have, as of today, 127 consecutive days, I've tracked this on an app, of starting my day with water, which is something I used to never do. Um, I know. And and thanks to people like you and, and James Clear, I'm making it a point to uh, prepare it in the evening and put it by my bedside Good as you just you. suggested. And so that's the first thing that that's awesome. uh, goes inside you. me. Uh, but it wasn't always the case. I, I certainly still do not get enough water, but I'm, I'm headed in the right direction. Uh, speaking of direction or, or movement or just making progress on a project, if that happens to be writing a book, it can be easy to feel stuck. Maybe you get up early in the morning while everybody else is still asleep and you have that quiet time to kind of do your writing, but you feel like you're kind of on an island all alone throughout this process. It doesn't have to be that way. In fact, I would go so far as to say it shouldn't be that way. And it's one of the reasons I'm thrilled about the free training that my friend Chandler Bolt and previous Read to Lead guest uh, has put together that you can attend and watch right now for free at a time that is convenient for you. You just go to readtoleadpodcast.com slash published. Chandler's training helps take you from what might oftentimes be a blank page to actually published author because... 
you're leveraging a proven system that you can follow. Now, again, you can find out more about this free training when you go to readtoleadpodcast.com slash published. And the cool part is, if that isn't cool enough, you get a free copy of Chandler's book published when you register for the free training. It's a double shot of free, free training and a free book to go along with it. Again, go to readtoleadpodcast.com slash published. Now, let's talk about rest. You break it down into three categories, uh, one of them obvious, sleep, uh, breaks, and, and downtime. Talk about each of them, if you would, Brian, and, and what you've learned about optimizing each one of these three. Well, the secret shame of most road warriors is we don't know how to rest and we don't do it. We minimize it. We justify not doing it. We view it as completely optional. I mean, I was that guy, Jeff, eating dinner with my laptop lover, you know, <laughs> going to my hotel room, you know, having a drink in my hands and, and not always water, you know, stadium lights on, every possible device on. <laughs> and, you know, I'm working hard and it's, you know, it's taking me twice as long. It's half as good. And then I stumble into bed, you know, sometimes with the TV on, wake up with the TV on, go over to the bathroom. You know, if I've had a beverage or three, you know, within that <laughs> evening, you know, I've got this cotton ball that decided I wanted to multiply overnight. You know, then I start thinking about all the things I got to do the next day and mm. I lay back into bed and I take a nap. I wake up a couple hours feeling sharp as a bowling ball. <laughs> and that's day two of a four day trip, man. And so I wonder why I'm so exhausted from that. You know, and as a result, doing that year after year after year, I crashed. Mm. I gone so hard for so long looking at rest as a necessary evil, something for the mere mortals that I was forced. To, I had to learn how to rest from complete exhaustion and major health issues. Mm. And, uh, you know, there's a quote that Michael Hyatt says often, and you and I heard him say this before, the more tired I am, the dumber I get. Mm. And most people don't realize that. You know, if we are going to be on our A game and be at a top high performing level, whether we're a C-suite or we're a manager that is just working our way up doing regional work, we've got to view rest as important. And as a result, as you mentioned, the rest area is broken down into three areas. So sleep, and my phrase with that is improve, then increase. Most business mm. travelers instantly object and push back for, to sleeping more. So we concentrate on improving your current sleep, what you're doing right now, and then starting there without adding a second to your night. Then over time, increasing the amount of sleep. So we want to improve what you're doing right now, and then we'll start to add to that. And that's absolutely critical. Then we move on to breaks. Break, I define, it's move the body, rest the mind. Most people do the opposite. They move their mind and then they rest their body. So they're in a break, and as I alluded to earlier, what they'll do is they'll just go from the computer to their phone and look at social media. Or if they're in a meeting, they just go from sitting down to sitting down, and nothing is changing with them that's actually giving the benefit of a true rate break of moving my body and resting my mind. And I break down breaks into three areas. There's the micro, you just think seconds. Mini, think a few, a few minutes. And macro, think a larger chunk of time, maybe 10 or 15 or 30 minutes. So a break during a business trip may be taking a few seconds to stand or to stretch or take your eyes off the screen or just maybe shutting your mouth. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> taking a couple minutes to get some water, go to the bathroom, take a quick break and then take a walk. Um, taking a few minutes to eat, go for a real walk. Uh, meditation, maybe just a deep breath or a short guided meditation. Just something that's going to allow for you to move your body mm. and rest the mind. And the third aspect of rest is downtime, which I define as time to be, not to be on. Now, unfortunately, on the road, we are always on. We are on in our presentations, in our meetings. We are on if it's a social gathering, if it's a corporate event that evening, whatever, we're always on. And this is where we learn to do your road thing, is what will allow you to not be on and to give some energy back. Because energy by default has three directions. It's either consumed energy. And the road by default consumes your energies. So you think about delays or schedule changes or mm. late nights uh, or conserved energy, which is choosing not to do something. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to talk to them. I'm not going to do this. And then created energy, which is choosing to do something that puts energy back in you. And this is where downtime comes into play. So let me give you two examples. So I have two downtime activities through the years. One is Barnes & Noble. I love finding Barnes & Noble. <laughs> Give me an hour. I'm not allowed to have caffeine because of my energy level. <laughs> so I'll get a hot tea and I'll go and I will go into usually the business section, fitness and health section, psychology section. I'll bring out a slew of books and I'll sit down right there, look through books, take some notes, take pictures right there, see what my library has, see what Audible has. And that's how I find things. Often too, Jeff, 
many books I have found actually from your podcast, from mm. Read to Lead Podcast. So I'll remember a conversation. I'll look into my notes. I'll go into the into Barnes and Noble and physically look at the book and re- look through that and make the purchase right there or through Amazon on a Kindle or whatever. But that's an example of that. Number two is this. I love sports. I love <laughs> catching a game. I don't care what it is. I'll find a cheap seat off a stub hub, sit in the nosebleed section and work my way down because I'm just by myself. And I've actually hit every single Major League Baseball stadium inside the park. Wow. No drive-bys allowed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I love, I could be with 20,000 or 40,000 people and talk to no one unless I want to. And it's just my way of kind of unplugging. And you know what's amazing? Instead of plowing through work and it taking twice as long and half as good as I mentioned earlier, I can actually go back and work for maybe an hour and I get so much work done because I did downtime, time to be, not to be on. And the top performers, musicians, business professionals who are elite in their field, all prioritize rest. And it's their performance enhancing, not drug, discipline of choice. Mm, I love how you frame that. Well, uh, that's the physical energy habits. Let's move into the mental energy habits now and perform is the first one. What have you found to be the keys to consistently performing well mentally while on the road? Well, perform, as we've mentioned, that's why we're on the road. There, We're there to perform at the highest level. And most of us, we just kind of show up at our business trip and just kind of do our deal on default. But for those of us that want to be elites, we're going to look at things differently. And that's in three areas. One, it's our planning. We're telling where your time will go on paper. Mm. Not just as far as, okay, my meeting's at nine and I've got this lunch thing here. I mean, that's, that's pre-trip, but the day of. You're looking at going every window of time, where can my time go, plan A and plan B. You know, we know most of the day things go awry on the road, but so it's being prepared for that. Then the second area is what I call block and tackle. I mean, it's a football term. It's the basics. If a team doesn't do blocking, tackling, they are lousy and Mm. they give up a lot of points. The premise for blocking and tackling is blocking out a specific amount of time to work on one specific task. So you think about deep work with Cal Newport. It's taking your time on your road and going, okay, you know, I'm going to have a 30 minute window of time between meeting one and meeting two. I I could have an hour break between these two meetings here, but knowing in advance, I'm going to block and tackle that time. What am I going to do? And I'm going to make sure that I use my time wisely so I'm not having dinner with my laptop lover. I'm not at 10 o'clock at night working on a presentation for for tomorrow, which I didn't use my time wisely by planning and block and tackling. Mm. And the third thing is pacing. And pacing is not just walking around. It's pacing your energy. It's becoming a a Buckleyism, which I call energyologist, (laughs) which is a personal study of your own energy. And it doesn't have to be going 100 miles all the time, which I used to do. It's asking, well, when is my energy highest within the day? So I'm leveraging in my hotel room at 8 o'clock in the morning before I got to get for my 10 o'clock meeting. I've got this one hour that I can really, really hunker down and focus on this one specific thing that's going to move the needle today on my performance. It's why is my energy low right now in the middle of the morning or the middle afternoon? A lot of times it's, it's based on lack of sleep or poor food. Is there anything I can do to change my energy level? You know, eat, move, rest. Ironically, the three physical energy habits. Um, The last question is, how can I match my tasks with my energy? Sometimes I'm trying to plow through something and I'm just brain dead. I'm exhausted from talking or speaking or consulting or whatever Mm. or listening. And, you know, I'm trying to plow through something and I'm just best not to do that task right now. And not, and, and, and not get anything accomplished through that. I mean, the key is knowing the rhythm of your road day on the road. It's planning for what you can. It's adjusting to what you can't. And it's leveraging your energy to work for you. What about uh, when it comes to uh, personal and professional uh, development? You mentioned listening to podcasts, which I love. I- is our time on the road an excuse to come back to some of this stuff later? I know I'm really good about taking a book along. I'm less good about actually cracking it open while I'm on the road. Well, and that's the average person. So excuse, yes. Reality, not not necessarily. There's a a theme for the quote in my book that says, if you want to do something, you'll find a way. If you don't, Mm. you'll find an excuse. And that's by Jim Rohn. And I put that theme, it's almost this little thread that runs through the book through each of the six energy habits. Because if we want to do something, Jeff, no matter what it is, we're going to find a way. Otherwise, we're going to put an excuse up. And Dale Partridge, um, I read in his book, that said this, if you're not willing to learn, nobody can help you. But if you're willing to learn, nobody can stop you. Mm. And that's so true, especially on the road. When I get onto a plane, I don't have anybody there that tells me I have to open up that laptop and I have to work. And if I do, something else is off. 
I'm not using my time wisely that morning, the night before. I could look at my systems and figure out, you know what? There is time there. Even if for 10 or 15 minutes, there is time for me to read. And the develop energy habit is the most neglected of the six energy habits because you don't have to do it. The others you do, even if you do it poorly. But choosing to develop is what separates the men from the boys. You know, the mm. A-team versus last off the bench from the amateur versus the pro. And there are three areas of develop. First one is this, sharpen the mind. This is putting good things in, Jeff. This is your reading, listening to learn and to grow. Mm. It's also processing the thoughts. It's getting any thoughts out of my head, whether I'm journaling it and I'm just writing it down, uh, how my day's going, or just anything of, of journaling. Uh, think space. It's, it's dedicating time to develop and process key ideas and concepts. And lastly, it's monitoring the heart. It's finding out how I'm really doing. There are a ton of really cynical, critical, negative, discouraging road warriors out there. I mean, you can find them in packs. And you know what? I don't want to be that guy. I've been that guy. I've listened to that guy. And nothing good comes out of that. So I want to make sure I'm monitoring my heart because you know what? There's people I love that I'm going to come home to. And I make sure that my heart is in the right spot. There's people I, I meet on the road and I want to be an encouragement to them. I want to be energy. I want to be a breath of fresh air for them. I want to be inspiring to them. And I can't be that if I'm negative. But if I can sharpen the mind putting good things in or I can process the thoughts, getting my thoughts out and I can monitor the heart, finding out how I'm really doing, it makes a huge difference. And, and it's a choice to develop on the road and it must be a priority. Mm. And there are times on the road, Jeff, let me give you examples. Driving to the airport, every single day that I drive to the airport, I got a 30 minute drive from my door to parking my car in Chicago. And I can listen to something for 30 minutes right there. Walking through the terminal. At that point, I've got something in my ears. I got to get a long-term parking bus. I got to go through security TSA and getting to my gate. I've got time that's there. Mm. You don't have to work every moment on a flight. You can read for a few minutes, like I mentioned. Um, when you wake up at your hotel room in the first mor in the morning, um, that first hour of the day, how do you spend your time? Is it reading emails, text messages, um, you know, your inbox? What are you doing? It, you need to make sure you're using your time wisely to personally and professionally develop. And those are the ones that advance in their careers, also grow personally and are able to invest into other people. Well, finally, that takes us to connect. And we both hinted at this a little bit earlier. The other two mental energy habits relate to work, but this one is different. How, how so? Well, the reality is most road warriors are important at work, but then they're invisible at home. You know, I feel I'm in control when I travel, but then I somehow lose control of my own house. <laughs> you know, I tell others what to do on the road, but then I get told what to do when I come home. Mm. You know, and oftentimes I'm killed at work and then I feel like I'm getting killed at home. And that doesn't feel good. But the connect energy habit is one of the most important energy habits of them all. I've met many, many a lonely road warrior. And oftentimes, it's usually after, you know, some honesty juice, if you know what I'm saying, you know, that secret sauce. And the guy starts to let down his guard, you know, he pulls back the, 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 the covers a little bit, and you realize he's on a second marriage. You know, mm. his kids haven't talked to him in a while. He comes home after two weeks, and his wife's like, when are you traveling again? You're messing up my home groove. Mm. You know, he's told, you know, hey, I got the best marriage ever. You know, my husband, he travels, he's gone all week, and I got direct deposit. <laughs> you know, and when you feel that way, it's just like, man, I understand why the road can be an escape. But we lose the connection the longer we're on the road, whether it's the number of days per week or month or the number of years, our relationships really, really start to suffer. Because, you know, my wife is a single mom when I'm gone. Mm. She has to raise my kids when I'm not there. And that is hard. My sons don't have, my daughter doesn't have their dad to tuck them in at night, to go to their games, help them with their homework, throw the football in the backyard. And those are lost moments. So we've got to figure out ways we could be more creative. Now, most road warriors have become a check-in guy or girl, not a connect-in guy or girl. Connect is the one energy habit too, Jeff, that is not solely dependent on you. If you choose to neglect your family and or your friends, they have a choice if they ever want to re-engage with you again or at what level. So the check-in, which is the occasional text or phone call or FaceTime, is to me the bare minimum. Mm. Anybody can do it. And oftentimes it's more about my schedule and my convenience. And I was that guy for a long time. So here's a quick story. I remember one time going so hard for so long and my wife just wanting a break and understanding her needs. And she's competitive. So we were going back and forth about who's more tired after me doing <laughs> week after week after week. So I remember pulling into my driveway coming up and I saw my wife's beautiful arms 
not, not any other part of her body. And I see my baby at the time doing running man and his legs just flying. It was my wife's universal sign, buddy, I'm done. D-U-N-N, done. He's yours, exit stage left. So I, I love to say what I did is I walked in, I grabbed this beautiful baby, I kissed my gorgeous wife, and I said, honey, you know what? Why don't you take the rest of the night off? Go go out to eat, spend some time with your family or your friends. I'll take care of the family. The house will get cleaned, and I'm good. You come back when you're ready. What I did, and I'm ashamed of it, is my kids wanted to play. They want to spend time with dad. Daddy's home. Yeah, daddy's tired. Dad went and laid down for a couple hours on the couch. Mm. I mean, who does that? <laughs> and I, well, unfortunately, I did. And I remember waking up to a wife with tears in her eyes and mm. just going, something has got to change. That was my wake up call. And I realized that I needed to leverage the road that I was on to connect in ways that moved my relational needles and to do something different so that I could actually what I call connect in three different ways, connect intentionally, which is on purpose, not reactively, connect thoughtfully, which means I'm reflective. I'm really thinking through what I'm saying or I'm doing. And then creatively, connecting in a memorable way. And so when I started to implement that, realizing, okay, wait, how do I leverage the road? Okay, I'm not with my family, but I could do things differently that I don't normally do when I'm with them. I can say words, I can bring home gifts, I can make connections in ways that really, really matter to the people I love the most. Mm. I sometimes correspond more with my friends when I'm on the road than I'm home because I can think through with think space, I can write down some ideas. You know, I've not talked to my pastor in a while. I'm gonna send him a text about this. I've not talked to my nephew in a while. I've not talked to a buddy of mine if I've just lost track of. I wanna touch base with him. I got a buddy of mine that's going through a really hard thing right now. How can I encourage him right in a thoughtful, intentional way? When I started doing that, it's amazing, Jeff, how those relationships started bouncing back. A little skeptical at first, because dad had been, you know, uh, missing an action, MIA, felt mm -hmm. like DOA but really trying to come back and revive those relationships and make sure I was consistent. I started doing something for my wife. It's called the Not Forgotten Journal. I saw a journal in Barnes & Noble. I thought, man, this is super cool looking. I've got to figure out something. I'm doing some things for my kids. How can I do something creative for my wife? So what I did is I got this journal on the first page. I put to Not Forgotten Journal, Dear Susan. And I listed on there, hey, I'm going to write down every day I'm on the road. I'm just going to take a couple minutes and I'm going to write something down that shows you that I'm thinking about you while on the road. Mm. And I absolutely love doing it. Top left corner, I put the city I'm in. Top right corner, I put the date, and then I just write in there and just something. Sometimes it's, you know, man, I remember when we first met. Hey, I remember this certain thing with the kid. Hey, I remember this, um, you did this for me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. Sometimes it's a memory. Sometimes it's just going, you know, I'm flat out lonely. Man, I've been on the road for four freaking days. I am mm. exhausted. I wish I was home. I don't want to be at this dinner right now. <laughs> you know, I'd rather be home with you, even whatever, and just missing you right now. Mm. So it's something like that, the Not Forgotten Journal. It's uh, postcards for my older boys. They don't care when they get them. It's just some mail. And of course, I got two older sons. It's got to be different cards. Can't be the same cards. <laughs> but yeah, just something to let them know. It's something educational. It's a thought or whatever, a memory for them. They love that. Um, I do a thing called Flat Kiddos, which is a, a kind of a straight off rip off of Flat Stanley. You know, the character that's flat that can fly and travel anywhere. And so I did one. I cut it out, put it on a poster board. I had my kids color it, my, my uh, number three and number four kids. And Flat Stanley or Flat Kiddos have these travels all over the place. They've taken a picture with you, with Michael Hyatt, <laughs> with pilots. They've taken, they've um, been in unique spots. You know, they've gotten themselves into trouble, places they should not have been, which I had the pictures <laughs> to prove it. I mean, but it's like my family loves to see the pictures of where they are, the consistency of that. But that's being connect creatively. It takes time. And I usually do that first thing in the morning. It allows them to see who I'm spending time with. It's a way to connect. It took time, Jeff, to win them back because of the decay that I had for so long of just being the check-in guy. And I needed to know this has got to be different because my family is who I'm investing into. My friends are my legacy and my life. And I want to invest into the people that matter most. Mm, those flat, uh, what did you call them again? Not Stanley's, but... Flat kiddos. Flat kiddos. Uh, they've been on stage at the Achieve conference that you and I attended. They together, have. As a matter of fact. They have. <laughs> Almost under gunpoint. I mean, we were we were pushing on that one. Yeah. Thanks for the diversion. I really appreciate that. <laughs> no, you're welcome. Well, I got a couple of questions uh, that I want to ask. I ask just about everybody uh, that are not directly related to the book. Before I do that, Brian, is there anything else uh, from the book you want to make sure we know? I know we covered a lot of it. No, I, I appreciate that, Jeff. I mean, my heart of the entire book. Was, this is not all my success story. I mean, it really came from the point of running my body into the ground, trying to be Superman, you know, pushing through everything. And I was known for my energy. I was known for results. Mm. And I did it at a cost. You know, I use the phrase, at what cost? The at symbol, 
um, mm. the, the dollar sign and a question mark at what cost? And, and for me, it literally was my health to the point where my wife's like, you are sick. You have got to get healthy for our family's sake. And as a result of that, I had to get healthy just for myself. I don't want road warriors to have to get to that point um, that they blow themselves out. Whether somebody like you, Jeff, who just travels once a month or a quarter, or somebody who travels on a consistent basis, when you do travel, there are ways to do it at an elite level mm. so that you do your best. And that's my heart behind the book, Jeff, is these six energy habits are ways that we can implement, whether it's just the, the simple practices or the strategies, so that ultimately we can go from that existing or exhausted road war to an experimental road war. Let's try things on the road. And then let's commit to it, being the engaged road war. And let's excel. Let's really kind of turn that that corner, that tipping point, so when we get where we're that that energized road where we're at that at that top level, but then that's not the top. The top is maintaining that, and that's the elite status of that elite road where. So that's my heart behind the book. So whether it's somebody travels a lot, or they work for a company that has business travelers, or they they know somebody who's a business traveler, my hope mm. is that they get a copy of this book in their hands. My goodness, you can actually get a free audio book by just purchasing the book. Um, so that they just have the content that can help them. It's neat hearing, you know, uh, wives who've gotten the book that have given it to their husbands or li listen to the audio just a little bit and just to hear some of the stories of changes. And that really is what warms my heart and why I do this in the first place. Mm. Well, uh, beside your own book, think about the books that you've read the last few years or maybe even the last, you know, course or year of your career, even if you want to go back that far. What would you say, Brian, are the two or three that immediately come to mind as having had uh, a big impact on you? And if you if you don't mind, share how or why they impacted you as they did. Sure. Well, the first one we kind of deal with it. You know, the whole premise of this is energy habits, you know, mm -hmm. habits. We do them all the time. But most of the time, they don't bring us energy. So um, James Clear, obviously, we both interviewed him before, and you've had him on on your show a couple times, I believe. But Atomic Habits was a great, great book mm. because I'm always reading books so that I can be a curator and then a translator. How can I curate the, the content and then translate it to the world of a business traveler? Well, since we all have habits on the road, how do we translate that? And James just did a phenomenal job of mm. translating a lot of those habits. And a lot of my vernaculars come from him. And I've just got huge respect, but also um, credits and, and respect for him because I've been able to translate a lot of those concepts to the road for the road warrior. Mm. A second book is one on sleep. And this is one of the best titles ever for a business book on sleep. It's called Sleeping Your Way to the Top. <laughs> it's not, not the best title ever. But I love this book, and there's a ton of books on sleep. And why I liked this book is it kind of had that tongue-in-cheek, obviously, from the title of the book. But all throughout it, it had just brilliant research. It was done in creative ways of writing, and it just wasn't a bunch of just you know generic tips. And I just love the strategies of the book. Terry Crawley and Dr. David Brown were the authors. Love their writing style, the tongue-in-cheek, and the practical suggestions. And that book I've referenced over and over and over. I'm actually mm -hmm. now speaking with Terry Crawley. We've spoken once together at the National Sleep Foundation Sleep Show. We're going to speak at the, the uh, another um, conference that's up and coming, the Global um, GPTA, Global Travel uh, mm -hmm. Association, and on the topic of business travel and sleep. So that book had such a profound influence on me. Uh, lastly is a book I just finished by um, Todd Herman called The Alter Ego Effect. And it's learning to show when we show up on our field of play, in this case, the road, what are the characteristics of who would be the ideal person I want to personify mm. when I get onto the road? And I want to be that certain person. So what does that elite road warrior look like? You know, what does he carry? What does he do? How does he feel? What does he think? Mm. So that when I'm, I'm transporting myself and I'm getting onto that plane or the, for me, it's literally when my carry on goes into my car. And I sit in my seat and I turn the ignition to the car. That's when my alter ego effect kicks mm. in of elite road warrior. That changes for me. Because at that point on, what would an elite road warrior do? Well, he's going to do the six energy habits. And so for me, it was just a brilliant book, but also put a lot of language of how do I be this, embody this person that's going to become an elite road warrior. So those would be my three suggestions. I mean, I'm an avid reader just as you are, Jeff, but mm -hmm. those are the three that are are really fitting to the the you know the business travel life. Mm. Well, you mentioned speaking. I know you're doing more and more of that now, especially with the book coming out. What would be, Brian, some of your tips for uh, delivering uh, an impactful and memorable public talk? I think that skill is one that every leader needs to possess. Absolutely agree. I think I've listened to many, many brilliant people who I was bored with. You know why? Lack of energy. Mm. So I've learned early on, I cannot rely on the audience's energy to give me energy. Mm. B-Y-O-E, bring your own energy. 
<laughs> and if I bring the energy, they often respond to that energy, Jeff. So that for me, and oftentimes, you know, that alter ego effect. So I have a whole routine I go to before I speak. So for me, making sure that I'm in the right frame of mind and there's whole process that I go through so that I'm creating the energy, putting myself in the heart of a servant of what I can give to the audience and making sure that that kicks in with there. So that energy is number one. Um, the second thing is surprising though, is vulnerability. And how I've blown it, especially when I'm talking about my story, you know, most people look at him. I'm in, I'm in decent shape right now. I turned 50 this year, um, but I've not always been that way. You look at the picture when I was 40, that picture's in the book or on a, on a video that I have, you know, it's, it's, I've not always been that way. So to give that level of vulnerability of the story of, you know, with my wife and, you know, my kids and all these examples of that and translating in a way that resonates with my audience and speaks to them so they understand that level of vulnerability makes a big difference. And I think the last one, this may be surprising. But it's to challenge people. I mean, people want and need to be challenged, not just entertained. They want to be entertained. And, and I have a humor, sarcastic, ad lib side of me, which is in, you know, when I speak. But in the end, I want people to be inspired and ultimately challenged to transform their lives to something that matters. Yeah. I want a woman or a man in an audience when I'm speaking about business travel for them to think more about work and giving their life to that specific company who in two years they may have gotten, you know, uh, let go or downsize or a merger and acquisition, which I've gone through a couple in my career. And next thing you know, you know, there's three of us and I'm the one not needed. I mean, they're <laughs> the most expensive one or, or least experienced or whatever. And then all of a sudden they find themselves completely overweight, unhappy and disconnect their families. Mm. So I really want to challenge them that there's more to this. You can truly leverage the road to, to, to master the business travel life and to get the most out of it you can in all those three focus areas of work, health, and home life. Well, is it safe to assume that, that moving forward, uh, at least one of the things ahead for you that you're excited about is, is more public talks? You're doing some keynote speaking, other things? Yes. Yeah. I'm really excited about that. You know, my last gig I actually picked up was somebody I, I sat next to on a plane of all places, <laughs> you know, talking to them and, and understanding they get on a plane every Monday morning and fly back every Thursday night. The only thing difference in their, their week is their location. They may be three months in Phoenix, five months in Boston, six months in Seattle. And to hear that and to find out that they need somebody who knows the road and who can talk in that world to that. So coming in and doing keynote speaking on that, I'm absolutely jazzed about mm. uh, corporate workshops. So taking the, the book and that ends up usually end up in a keynote and the keynote usually ends up in a corporate workshop, but not always. And coming in and spending a day with those business travelers and really working through the six energy habits and then how they can actually apply in their life. And uh, I'm excited about that. And I think the last thing is Road Warrior Recharge. And this is a monthly paid content uh, membership site that individuals and companies can leverage for kind of their ongoing development of the six energy habits. And then working through the five levels to becoming an elite road warrior. I don't want to be the guy that comes in, riles them all up, sends them home. Or in this case, <laughs> sends them on the road. I really want to give them resources that are from subject matter experts such as you and others that are in key areas of the six energy habits that allow them to not just get by but to get better for their work, for their health, and their home life. Mm. Well, uh, Brian, this has been a, a treat to, to talk to you, and, and your energy just <laughs> just comes through. That's uh, well, thank you. so appropriate for, for what you do. Uh, the book, again, is Elite Road Warrior, Six Energy Habits to Master the Business Travel Life. His name is Brian Paul Buckley. Check him out, EliteRoadWarrior.com. Did I get that right? You did. did. And actually, <laughs> uh, yeah, on there is a 90 second video. If somebody just wants a kind of a snapshot of what's what is this whole thing about? That video is very, very uh, self-explanatory. can help you really understand that. And there's also a road warrior level assessment. You know, what level of road warrior are you? A lot of times people just want to know where they are. You can find that along with uh, additional information for individuals and corporations as well. So, Well, thank you so much, Brian, for your time and your expertise and for being forever a part of the uh, Read to Lead podcast. Appreciate having you. Honored to be here, Jeff. Thank you so much. For more on the links and resources that Brian and I talked about today, go to my website, this specific page. In fact, read to lead podcast.com slash 266 for episode 266. Don't forget, too, that today is the last day to register for the Boss Free Virtual Summit and get a few of those sessions before they go away. BossFreeSummit.com. There you can also find out more about the All Access VIP Pass and get all 34 sessions on demand, $1,500 in bonuses, and a special invitation to our private Boss Free community. I'm so glad you listened to the Read to Lead podcast. Thanks for being here this week. And that's going to do it. I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, remember, Remember, leaders read and readers lead. Oh, 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 oh